Hey, wanted to take a moment to show you what I've done here with three Chameleon products. One of them is their remote auto tuner here, the ATU-1. What I've done is I've strapped it to this aluminum fence that's used as a counterpoise. And I have also, as you can see here, it's strapped, strapped to the fence on the back side there. The, um, these, at least attempt to make contact with this fence. You can see where I've scraped it a little bit to help to make the contact there. And, um, and since this is anodized and anodized is not electrically conductive, I filed a couple of the areas here on the ears so that there's electrical contact between here and here. Now, if I wanted to get more um, rigorous about it, I could take the little wing nut here and just drill a hole and, and put a screw through that just to make sure that that's really making contact. But this seems to be making contact pretty good. And so what I've done here, what's very unusual about this setup, not only is this uh, unusual in so much as being used on an aluminum fence, but I have modified this area here, what used to be the beehive, I've modified this so that you could put this 3 8 24 thread antenna into it. And what I've got here is this, um, the chameleon 25 foot whip. And then to make it even more unusual, I've got their capacitance hat on top, which I have modified to go onto the whip. So here's the setup. What I've done is I've taken the chameleon capacitance hat, which normally screws on to a 3 8 24 thread, and I've drilled a hole through it and tapped a 440 screw into it so that I can uh, just attach this directly to the whip. Uh, just makes it more convenient and what you can see here is on the whip you can get it down to the second part there and it sits there at the bottom real real comfortably it really likes working there it's almost at the very top so uh, this seems to be a a very good workable solution to put the capacitance hat on to go onto the whip now um when it's windy like it is today, I do not extend this all the way. This is, but this is almost all the way. This is about um, just just a few feet from being fully extended. And so, and when it's really calm, I do extend it all the way. Um, and uh, so that's uh, a pretty unusual setup. Now, this gets me all the way from 1.8 megahertz all the way up to, if I really wanted to operate it, to uh, 50 megahertz. Now, before I was doing this here, uh, I would just leave the Beehive connector around and I'd connect uh, this one here to a thing I got from Ham Radio Outlet. Just this, this type situation here where you can just connect the 3 8 24 um, here and the coax here. So I was doing that for a while, but I've actually found it, it works better in this way. And it's just more convenient. It's just a more convenient setup. And, and also I've got two of these, one that I use on a parks on the air type of scenario. And what I've done is I've drilled another hole down in here and I put a 3 8 24 stud here so that I can mount this whole thing on a tripod. And that's my setup. I just take this here, mount it on a tripod, put the whip on it and go. Uh, it just makes a real convenient package, really simple, and it works really well. I'm gonna show you that to you here in a second. All right, so we'll show you what kind of performance I'm getting in my setup here. So. The ICOM 7610 has band stacking, which means that you, you, you can press the button multiple times and, and store multiple modes here. And what I do with each one of these bands is I make one of the band stacks RTTY. So this makes it convenient because I always tune up on RTTY. So we'll start with uh, 
1.8 megahertz here. And what I've experimentally found is that at 1.8 megahertz, you need about 10 watts, and on the rest, six watts works well. Uh, if you use a different number, it comes up with a different tune, but I've experimentally found out that 10 watts works real well on 1.8, and six watts works real well on the rest. So I'll show you the, the process here. What we do is you've got the little controller here with the button, and when you press the button, all of a sudden, the whole band's going to drop for momentarily, and then I'm going to hit transmit here. And you can watch the SWR and other things happening here while it thinks about it. And it's just found the solution, so I'll turn transmit off. And what we could do now is I've got a, an AB switch here where I direct the output of this to the nano VNA, and we can take a look at the tune. So the particular scale factor I have here is um, five megahertz per division, but it starts at one megahertz on the far end. So this is five, 10, 15, 20, and so forth. So you can see that this is right around two megahertz, and you see that the tune is really good. I've got a nice sharp peak there, well below one and a half to one SWR, and this is at 1.8 megahertz. So what I'm gonna do is go back down to six, because like I say, I've experimentally found that six works well for the rest of them. So we'll go up to three and a half megahertz. We'll take a look at that now. See what happens there. So I'm gonna press the tune button, hit transmit, and you'll see down here, it kind of work in here. And it, up a maximum of five seconds, it comes up with the solution here. We'll take a look at what it's come up for me for three and a half megahertz. And you can see that this is not quite as good. Let's see, I'll go back down here. And um, so this is uh, at 3.8 megahertz, we've got about a two to one. Uh, and so what would this would be, will be better, I'll change the AB switch back to the band. This would be better right around in this area here, but that's okay, because that's where most of the action is. Uh, so we'll go into seven megahertz next, and we'll push the button and go to transmit, and it tuned up just that quickly, and we'll take a look at what kind of solution it's given to us. So here, let's see, I'll move the cursor around. We see this nice little bump here at right around seven megahertz, 1.2 to one. Uh, so that works real well for seven megahertz. Now we'll go to 10, see what that looks like. And it's tuned up just that quickly. And go back and see what it's made for us. And 10 megahertz is right on a division here. So you can see it's very close to one to one. Come back down. We'll take a look at 14 megahertz. And it's tuned just that quickly. We'll see what that's made for us. You can see here, 14 megahertz is this bump down here just before the 15 megahertz division. Very low SWR. Continuing on up the band, 18 megahertz. Let's see. And just that quickly it's tuned and we'll see what that's done for us. So we got this nice bump down here. This is 20 megahertz, this is 15, so right in between. So we'll take a look now at 21 megahertz. Most of these are the high bands, it tunes pretty quickly, just like that did. And 21 megahertz, you see this nice little bump, very low SWR here at 21 megahertz. Coming and proceeding on here, 24 megahertz. Let's see, we'll try that. It's probably tuned out already, yep. And see what that's done, yep. Nice spike just before 25 megahertz. And finally, 28 megahertz. 
Let's see. And there it goes. And we'll see what that's done. You can see this nice spike way out here, almost, um, you know, maybe uh, pretty low. We'll take a look at it. Yep. Uh, 29 megahertz and 1.467 to one. So all of this is really usable. You could use the whole thing really easily, just super quick. You just press the button, it tunes up in seconds. Uh, comes to a solution that works real well. Um, yeah, so this is what has worked out for me. And and I've been able to work a, quite a bit of the world uh, using this setup. So I'm very satisfied with this. I've played with a number of um, vertical antenna solutions, and this is just pretty good, pretty easy, works pretty well. Now, one thing I will say, let me see, I'm gonna demonstrate something for you. Um, go back to seven megahertz here. Let's see, tune that back up, that should be it. So just to make sure, yep, there's our seven megahertz again. Now I'm gonna demonstrate something for you that we've heard. What we've heard is that it's got latching relays and when you turn the power off, the tune remains, right? Well, I'm gonna turn the power off. The sound changed. We'll take a look at what the tune is now. Nothing like what we had. So let me turn the power back on and see if it restores the tune that was there. Um, no. <laughs> so, you know, that's been my experience. My experience is, I mean, it looks like that this is tuned maybe for 1.8 megahertz um, when it was tuned for seven. So, so I'm not sure... You know, it could be that the prototype had latching relays, but my experience is you dump the power and it just drops. And you restore the power and you have to do another tune session. That's been my uh, experience here. Um, so I'm not sure why that is. <laughs> but it, And I've got two of these and they both do the same thing. So here's my 7 megahertz tune again. No problem. So, yeah. So anyway, like I say, just real happy with it. And this is my setup. Very unusual, I'm sure, to put the antenna right on the right on the unit, but it just makes it so convenient. And if you open up the unit, you'd see how um, you know this just makes a lot of sense. This modification. Thanks for watching.